morning. I hope you can you can hear me well um, and see my my presentation. So my my name is Yorio uh, Sosissimus. Uh, I work at the European Training Foundation. We're based here in Turin. You can see beautiful day behind me uh, here in Italy. Um, but to start my my presentation, I would like to 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 thank uh, Technica for this beautiful uh, opportunity to to talk about Centers of Excellence and the work we do in ETF uh, to develop Centers of Excellence uh, in countries outside the EU. Thank you, Technica. This is a great opportunity and uh, we were grateful for that. So, um, I would start with two questions, in fact. Uh, that it, it was the, the beginning for our work in, in ETF, where we said, okay, uh, do we just want uh, a good center of excellence or do we want an excellent uh, VET system? And, and I think the, the answer is obvious in this question, that we, we, really, we really want to go from an excellent center to an excellent VET system. And we call this, this, uh, uh, this journey the, the, the transition of excellence. And the second uh, question is, how do you create, how do you develop a center of excellence? Does it, does it fall from the sky? Um, it takes years to, to develop such a center. It takes connections. And you heard about that already from, from uh, the previous speakers, the connections with companies, the connections with, with the local uh, administrations, societies, the connection with, with research, with innovation world, uh, the connection with, with strategies, broader strategies than education, training, and so on. So a center of excellence for us is what you see on this, on this slide, where uh, we see them as engines for vet development, we see them as cases for good um, vocational schools and providers, we see them as good examples of, of commitment to change. What, what Technica showed us today with this event is actually commitment, and, and you need commitment to be, to be an excellent uh, center or an excellent system. And sense of excellence, there are also good examples of, of partnership between relevant uh, stakeholders. So this is, this is, let's say, our starting point. This is where we, we, we engaged into this journey following, of course, the work that the European Commission did. Um, and we, we thought that through the work we do on sense of excellence, we can address issues of human capital development. The ETF is mandated by the European uh, commission to work in countries outside the EU in the area of human capital development. So this is very relevant to our work. To improve the attractiveness of, of VET, this is an issue that, that is addressed by, uh, by different countries worldwide. And of course, through the Centers of Excellence to, to look into global challenges uh, like climate change, for example, or the, the technological and digital change, the demographic shifts. So you will see later on how we do that in, through our uh, work in ETF. Based on that, we, we started developing uh, an international network. So uh, we, we selected some countries outside the EU. We've done last year a mapping exercise where we looked into the different perceptions of what is the center of excellence. And of course, there are different perceptions. There is not a single definition of what a center of excellence is. We've done a registry. This is something that we're working on at the moment. So we put all the information there and we select center of excellence and we look into their needs and how we can help them develop. The idea, of course, is that through this network to uh, support, to facilitate excellence and to gain some uh, know-how. This map, I will not stay too long on this one. These are the countries that we work at the moment. But of course, we have on our network centers of excellence from, from, uh, from, from the EU, but also beyond these countries that you see on the map. How did we start? We, we address the ministers. Perhaps it looks a bit of a uh, top-down approach, but it's, it's really needed to do that in order to have some, some policy gains. So we address the ministers responsible for that in countries outside the EU, and we ask them to become part of, of, our, uh, of our network, to nominate, to tell us what are the sense of excellence they have in their countries, 
Then we looked into the what and how. What do they do, these centers, and how they do it? And of course, we looked into their commitment. This is very, very crucial. So it's not just to be part of a network, but you need to be committed to excellence. What do we want to achieve? We want to achieve partnerships. We want to achieve peer learning activities. We want to develop tools. And you see them as three different outcomes, but in fact, they're all related. You create peer learning uh, activities through partnerships. And of course, through partnerships, you also develop tools that they respond to, to the needs of the centers of excellence. This slide and the next one shows you the dimensions that we want to focus our work. We identified these dimensions based on the mapping, on what were the needs that we found out from, from the Centers of Excellence that we, 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 um, uh, we questioned last year. So we found out that most Centers of Excellence, they work on, on lifelong learning, initial vet, continuous vet, adult education. This is very common in Centers of Excellence. The second one, of course, which is perhaps the most obvious, is the education business collaboration. All centers of excellence, they have established some sort of um, uh, partnership or collaboration with, with businesses. And of course, this helps the centers of excellence to grow. And of course, there are clear benefits for the businesses as well. The third dimension that we want to focus on is pedagogy and professional development. A center of excellence relies on a good curriculum, a relevant curriculum that brings in the, the needs from, from, uh, from uh, the society, but also the needs from the companies. And of course, it relies to, to the teachers and trainers. So this is a very important pillar of our work. Smart specialization, this is crucial. It's crucial that the Center of Excellence provides skills that they are in line with the niche areas that, that, um, that uh, reach, reach or, or um, um, local communities want to develop further. Of course, the sense of excellence, they often focus on industry four. Technica is an excellent example of that and digitalization. So we could not leave that, that pillar behind. It's crucial. Sense of excellence, they rely on their autonomy and institutional development. And we challenge this idea with, with sense of excellence now with the COVID period where we, we said, OK, how can sense of excellence can better react on, on this uh, crisis situation we have? And one of the answers we got is that because of autonomy, because of the way they are governed, they are actually more flexible and agile to respond to extraordinary situations like the one we faced. Of course, Centers of Excellence, they support sustainable goals, uh, climate change, it's, it's one of them, the 2030 sustainable goals. We work a lot on green skills in, through the network. And then the last pillar of our work would be the social inclusion, because sense of excellence, unlike what was the, the previous, let's say, perception, they have a social uh, dimension, they can have a social dimension, and for us that is very, very important. So we developed a registry. I will go faster on these slides. The registry, of course, is, is our database, is our source of information from where we do our analysis, but also we feed back to the, to the members of the network for their own analysis. And of course, it, it gives us the, the opportunity to look into the areas where we need to focus for the future. So the registry is, is quite important tool that we use. One tool that we have developed recently, and we actually launched it this week for, for the test, is the self-assessment tool. This is very important. Um, first of all, from, for the members of our network, of any network, we want them to reflect and self-assess, to develop a baseline. Where are, at the moment, in the areas that I mentioned earlier on, the eight dimensions. And of course, uh, we want to help them to establish, through this net tool, to establish uh, priorities. Prior but of course, the tool is not only relevant for, for, uh, for the members, it's, only, it's relevant also for the platform our platform, our network, the international network, ENE, to identify needs. How do you know what are the needs for further development in the sense of excellence if you don't have feedback from them? So the self-assessment tool will help us get that information to analyze the needs, um, to, to evaluate the impact of the interventions, you know, uh, to develop knowledge, uh, a collegial, let's say, knowledge in the, in the network, knowledge that we can share uh, and diffuse 
to, to look into the dimensions of excellence. Are there any dimensions that we need to address? Those eight you saw, we have them for the next two years, but then we need to, to look what else uh, comes up. Um, and then, of course, to design and review the framework and test the relevance of framework through, uh, through application. Um, I, I hope everything is fine with, with, um, with the presentation. Yeah, so um, let me go back to, to, to my slides. So what actions do we need to take through the, through the uh, center, through the network? We do um, partnerships. In fact, we call them sub-initiatives because a sub-initiative includes all three products that we have. The partnerships, the peer learning activities, and uh, the tools development. So we are developing these sub-initiatives where we bring together a number of centers of excellence to work in a given area, which is, is close to their own uh, needs. What actions do we see through these sub-initiatives? So they design an action plan, so centers of excellence come together. I will show you an example, a practical example of what a partnership is about. They investigate opportunities for peer learning activities to develop tools. They identify uh, opportunities like the Erasmus Plus. You will hear a lot about Erasmus Plus in the future by Michelle. So the network can, can facilitate such opportunities and of course to explore opportunities for vet uh, mobility. Such a sub-initiative we, we signed uh, almost two months ago, where we brought together uh, two centers of excellence from uh, Latvia and Estonia, and um, centers of excellence from six uh, partner countries. And you see there, this is a practical example, they work on, on work-based learning, which of course is a crucial dimension of the business school collaboration, which is one of our dimensions. And you see how this smaller group now works together on that um, area. What do they do? They create coaching sessions, some of them online, but some of them they are real missions to the countries. And then their sense of excellence that participate in this partnership, they can develop their own baseline study to see where they are when it comes to work-based learning and to uh, evaluate uh, progress. The second sub-initiative that we have launched uh, already, it's, it's an institutional partnership with, um, with vet providers. We started with Skillman, which is uh, a vet providers platform. And again, the focus was on work-based learning, on teachers' professional development, on digitalization. Um, and uh, of course, we have there uh, centers of excellence from partner countries involved. We already were already working now on peer learning activities um, where everybody can can take part. The third sub initiative that we launched only last week uh, and it's a partnership again of centers of excellence from countries outside the EU and also um, member states is about autonomy. Uh, and of course, we're through the evaluation, so we cannot say much about this one, but this is an ongoing action that is, is, is crucial. Um, this is the indicative uh, timetable. So you see that we started the network this year with a letter, of, um, with a letter to the ministers in February. Uh, we, we received replies from, from partner countries. We have more than uh, 50 uh, centers of excellence now part of our network. We, we launched the sub-initiatives, we, we, um, we still we launched one recently, just, just last week. And now in June, we have the ETF publication. This is work that we've done last year. It was meant to be published at the beginning of, of the year. But of course, we thought that as the developments were rolling out, we thought to capture some of those. So it will come in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we will launch... Um, of course, more peer learning activities, and we're looking forward to have a conference of the network, which will be the launching conference uh, towards the end of the year. To keep up with all the work we do, uh, we invite you, of course, to, to follow us on the web. These are all live links that you can, uh, you can connect on, on open space, on Twitter or on uh, Facebook. Thank you. Um, I hope that was um, useful. And I'm open to, to respond to any questions. Thank you.
Thank you, Georgios. Now I have a question for you, Georgios. Georgios, there was a question that I think it's very appropriate for you. And the question is, what are the key parameters of a center of vocational excellence? Thank you. Thank you, Inigo. So what are the key elements for, um, for a center of excellence? Well, it's, it's a good question. Huh? Um, first of all, we believe that the center of excellence, it's, 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 a, it's a process. It, it develops, you know, it needs to mature. And uh, it starts perhaps with less elements, less characteristics, but then over the years, over time, through partnerships, through networking, through collaborations, it, it expands. Of course, one of the first uh, characteristics of, of Centre of Excellence is the collaboration with, with business. So what we call the business school uh, collaboration, this is, this is very important. And from our mapping exercise we have done last year in ETF with many partner countries, countries outside the EU, that was the first thing that all Centre of Excellence responded, that they work with, with businesses. So this is very important. Then um, there is a group of characteristics which is associated with, with what we call the pedagogy, and, and that's fundamental. It relates to the, to the teachers, to the way uh, they, they get trained, teachers and trainers. Um, it, re it, it refers to the, to the curriculum, how a curriculum is designed and how it can be relevant for the, for the needs of the society, of the individual, but also of the world of work. Then there's another group of, of elements or characteristics which is linked with what we call autonomy. Um, and, and if you could see my, my slides, uh, you would see that I made, I made reference and we actually dedicate one of our um, sub-initiatives in ETF on autonomy. Autonomy is not only academic autonomy, of course, it's, it's, all, uh, it's linked with, with governance, it's linked with financing, um, it, it links with the process of development of the institution itself. So this is another, uh, let's say, group of, of characteristics that the center of excellence should have. Another group of characteristics is its ability to, to connect, to, to create partnerships. Um, these partnerships, we talk a lot about them, but what, what, what really are they? Are, they are, um, they are leaving, uh, leaving partnerships with organizations that are, are uh, in the proximity of the center, but also worldwide. That's why we create an international network, because it's not enough to be well connected in your, let's say, neighborhood, uh, but you need to connect also internationally. You learn, but also you, you provide knowledge. So there's a diffusion of knowledge uh, between, between these partners. And of course, partners, they can be obviously the, the businesses, but they can be uh, universities, research institutions, can be the local authorities uh, or, the, or the, the government of the, of the region or of the country. Um, it can be connections with, with um, uh, different sort of uh, providers and platforms of providers. So these are very important. What we found out from, from our mapping uh, last year is that many centers of excellence, they work really well at local level, but they suffer from isolation when it comes to uh, working with, with uh, beyond the, the borders of the country. And this is another issue that we want to, um, to help uh, to solve through our international network to create these connections. Um, they need, they need uh, funding opportunities sometimes, financing opportunities, partners to work with. Uh, and of course, Erasmus Plus, is, it's, it's a brilliant project of the EU and, and it works really well. We need to make sure that, that information uh, and opportunities of that tool and others are, are available to, to different centers of excellence. So I would say in general that a center of excellence is not just one thing. It's it's an ecosystem. It's a, a it's um, it's a group of, of institutions that they work together, which have at the center, of course, the vet school, and uh, they work in, in harmony. They are flexible. They are agile to different needs, and um, they, they they produce innovation. Thank you.